welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie Wright, and I'm here with Connor from Inside Up Games. Hello, Connor. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you, and how's it going here at Origins? It's good, it's really good. We're in the gaming hall this year. We have a big space, there's lots of fun, and we've just been going so nonstop that it's Friday and I've already lost my voice. <laughs> oh, well, I won't keep you too long, but I see, yeah, lots of people playing Summit and some of your other games. And then what do you special do you have here to show us at Origins? Yeah, so this is Seven Souls. This is our latest game, which was on Kickstarter, uh, I guess, uh, about three, four weeks ago. Just finished off on the uh, on June 5th. But as you can see from the sign behind us, we are still doing pre-orders that you can get into the CrowdOx uh, Pledge Manager. And if you want help uh, contribute to some more stretch goals. Awesome. Congratulations on funding. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about Seven Souls. Uh, you know, how many players and kind of what you get and all that and who might be interested in it. Sure, so it is a one to six player game, taking about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, it isn't within the Lovecraftian universe of Cthulhu and all the evil. Uh, my twist on it is that we are actually playing as those evils. So we are the ancient ones. We are now trying to control the same poor seven souls, hence the name. Uh, use them to get us more power, more mental resolve, more victory points. Try to take over the world and have it do our bidding. Everything from <laughs> awards and altars to secret objectives. So you get to play as one of the ancient ones and be on the evil side for once, right? Exactly. <laughs> cool. And then, um, so what, what sort of inspired you to create this game? Uh, it was a theme that I had actually not even been that familiar with until I got into board gaming and then playing games like um, A Study in Emerald, which combines Cthulhu with some of my favorite things, which is the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, kind of opened up my eyes to that side of the gaming world and, of course, seeing how popular it is. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my spin on a very popular uh, theme and see what I could do with it and see what people thought. Awesome. And then tell us a little bit about, about the mechanics, like what's kind of unique about how you're trying to take over the world. Sure. So the most uh, most obvious thing is that our players are going to have a hand of cards. And as I mentioned before, we're all trying to control the same people. So what, how we're going to do that is a simultaneous action selection where we're selecting three players per round and sending them to each of one of the three different locations. At those locations, we'll be gaining supplies. But because we're all the same, we're all different gods trying to control the same people, we might accidentally send the same people to the same location. At that point, we need to test our mental resolve and our mental strength over that character, at which point we're going to be flipping cards to do resolve checks. If we tie, then that's fine. We both maintain control. But if I beat you, you're going to lose your turn and I get to go. However, you'll be getting rid of bad cards from your deck and you get my winning card. So the loser's deck gets stronger and the winner's deck gets weaker to help balance the game out really well. At the end of all the three locations activating, one of the investigators at the top is going to attack. Oh, From no. my poor setup, they're all the same investigator taking different things, but there are different investigators who look for different things as well. What you do is you look at the back icon on the investigator stack and that will tell you which location is activating. In this case, the ancient temple of the church. If you look up top of the investigator on the side, it'll tell us who he's attacking. So this means that he's attacking later in, the, in an initiative order, later in turn order. So that means at the start, when we're placing our characters, we're gonna look at that and say, oh, maybe I don't wanna send anyone later in initiative because I don't wanna get attacked. So I'm gonna send someone low. But if I do, they're probably gonna send low people there too, so maybe we might have to fight more. So it's, a, it's always a constant mind game of what am I doing, what do they think I'm doing, and what am I gonna do because they think I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> wow, okay, a lot going on. So yeah, a lot of strategy it looks like, a lot of playing the other players there. <laughs> Uh, sounds cool. If people are interested in Seven Souls, where should they go now to uh, get the pre-order? Yeah, so for sure. So they can go to the Kickstarter site and there'll be a late pledge button there that will relink. Or they can just Google search for a CrowdOx, the pledge manager, do a CrowdOx Seven Souls and it'll take them right there. Awesome. Anything else you want to share with our audience today about Origins or anything? No, I just said to you guys in particular, thanks for all the help you've given me over the years and keep up the awesome work. Awesome. Thank you so much, Connor. Great to see you again. You. And uh, as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game interview here at Origins, Columbus, Ohio, with Chris Vitarlis from Everything Epic. Epic. That's right, Epic Games. Games like Coma Award and uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Games like Rambo the Board Game and a few others as well. And we're just here to see what's going on with you at Origin and what games you got, what games you want to show people. And uh, as well as, of course, the ones I've already reviewed, which I really like, Coma Award and Rambo. So what you got going on? 
Well, as I said before, you wake up from a coma with full amnesia. You don't remember who you are or why you're there, and that's why we are in a hospital that's abandoned. Mm. Sounds like a great situation, and perhaps after exploring that hospital, you will discover some clues which will lead to a phenomenon. That's Coma Ward, which is right on over there, which you can come on and demo and perhaps pick up a copy here at Origins. I would suggest it. Now, Coma Ward reminds me of a little bit like the trail, but it's got its own unique twist to it and own unique storylines that are based on little boxes. That's right. It also has pill tokens, which we don't actually recommend that you ingest. However, but you they could, are you, you could. You yeah, could. Well, I mean, you, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should not. But you, but you could. Right, right. right. Don't do it, though. Don't, don't blame don't, us. Don't, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just don't do it. Yeah, it's an 18 plus game. It's actually very scary. Unlike Betrayal, as you were just mentioning, it actually has some very horror and adult themes, like rated R horror movies. Should, of course. It's actually scary as well. It's it not is. like campy, so it's creepy it's and more atmospheric. Creepy, yes. yes. And I've only played one scenario, which I got for the prototype, and that one was really good. I like that it has an ending. You feel like there's a finale that happens that goes crazy. The core game has 13 oh. scenarios. Each one is replayable with alternate endings, weird rules strange things that happen. There's also a double-sided board, too, for there how you are. want to play the That's game as right. well. It's either the realistic survival side or the surrealistic non-survival, maybe you might die and go insane side. Yeah. There's also two expansions. One, the Cataclysmic Abominations expansion with 12 more phenomenon. I'll Vanna I know, White this. I know. I'll Every Vanna time White I say it. phenomenon, you want to go phenomenon. Da -da 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 -da. Phenomena. Anyway, da, da, da. Okay, there's also the guest expansion pack with six more phenomena. So there's tons and tons of content for the game. Yeah, yeah. And plastic pill. Are they fancy? Mm. They are? No. no. Okay. No. So that's Coma Ward. We also have, if you want to get into trouble, in Big Little Trouble China? in Little China, yeah. the game. It's all in the reflexes. You may have heard about it. It's here. We have a couple of gold boxes as well. It's That's right. It's a pretty right. fancy one now. I know people kind of, kind of, I've been hearing a few things about it. Pretty, some pretty good things 40 about miniatures, it. 38 dice, 95 page storybook, and a partridge in a Jack Burton Pork Chop Express. We're going we're gonna to get a lot of these, aren't we? Maybe. Yeah. You also Everything got epic, you know. Rambo as well, which I got to try out. I love, I'm going to gush a little bit here. The prototypes we get from you guys are so cool. You mean uh, epic? I would say, I would say epic, yes. Yeah, that's right. Because I get just enough of a taste of what it's going to be like in the real game, and then all of a sudden I see it here at the cons, and I'm like, damn, I knew this was what it was going to look like just from that little bit of taste, and now this is the full entree. Just wait till you see the full-size cardboard knife that's coming in there. That's right. Rambo the board game, coming very soon. We've been working our butts off on it, took a little extra time, but hey, we're going to give you two helicopters in the box now, so what the hell. That's pretty epic. That's pretty epic. Oh, yeah. Any other games you want to talk about, or is that those are pretty much the, ones of the main ones of the con that you're Vampire, going to show? Vampire, the Masquerade, Blood Feud, the mega board game. The first mega board game ever. Four to 32 players. It's got four stations and a whole hell of a lot of epicness in the Vampire, the Masquerade universe. The first wait, 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 wait. mega four board to game. 32 That's players. right. Four to 32. It's played in teams of one to four players. Yep. Each one takes a faction of either human or vampire. It has a board? It has multiple boards. It's on a tile of an, a large cityscape, which will resemble New York. Okay. And you'll be fighting over New York and trying to create all of these different goals to basically take over the city. They just do everything epic at this, you at got this booth it. here. You got it. Everything I mean, because I know of a couple games that hit up that not many. It's like Werewolf and stuff. We have one card. That's not. Is this? Is that similar? It's like, nothing like it. It's it's okay. a huge epic game. So if you're if you got a full party of people, if you're at a game store and you want to get a lot of people together, you're doing something that's a full board game experience, not just a quick party game. It's not like a you know super quick thing. It's it's something that takes about two to three hours to play. Okay. And it's run by about one I or know. two people. Is there player elimination in this thing? There's no player elimination. Oh. If you die in the game, you just de-level and come right back, which is pretty cool. Okay. So you keep on playing. When's this coming out? Uh, well, we're going to put it on Kickstarter around Gen Con time. It's so going to work. So about a month and a half or so. This. Yeah. We have about 17 events at Gen Con running, so you can actually play it there. It's a ticketed event. You can join in, fun, and, and join in the epicness. That's very cool. That's what I'm going to say. Very cool. I want to see that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time got to uh, give us a little taste of what you got going on here at Everything Epic. Yeah. I look forward to seeing all the rest of the games you guys keep producing. I'm very, very impressed so far. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. And as always, yeah. guys, I look forward to seeing you next time.
Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie and I'm here today with Rob Dowdy from White Wizard Games. Hello Rob. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How's it going here at Origins? Uh, we've been super busy. Uh, it's been a great show so far. Awesome, great to hear. So what are you most excited to share with us at Origins? So we have a brand new game that we are launching in the U.S. here at Origins. Uh, it's called Sorcerer. It's a big, beautiful box set game uh, with uh, um, lots of gorgeous components and great gameplay. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about the game, like who is it for, how many players, and how a little bit of how it works. Uh, it's for two to four players. It's for ages 14 and up uh, in the game. Each player is playing an evil sorcerer uh, um, and you're battling each other for control over Victorian London. So you're going to be summoning terrible monsters and fighting uh, for control of the city. Um, at the beginning of the game, each player creates a sorcerer by choosing one of the four character decks, combining it with one of the four lineage decks and one of the four domain decks. Uh, the character deck is who you are, the lineage deck is what type of magic you use, and the domain deck is where you've been training and gathering followers. Um, and you combine the three of those together and you shuffle it up to make your deck for the game. There are 64 different uh, sorcerer combinations in the game. And I was just going to say, it seems like there's a lot of replayability lot of just replayability. in creating your character deck. So, for example, if we took, if we chose Masilda and we chose uh, the Necro uh, the Necromancer deck and we chose Forgotten Temple as our domain, we would take these cover cards off. These would give us special abilities we could use in whatever location we put our avatar standee in, and it also gives you your character's name for the game. In this case, we'd be playing Masilda, the Necromancer of the Forgotten Temple, um, and. All these cards shuffle up, and that makes our deck for the game. Awesome. It sounds pretty cool. How did you know I'd want to choose this character? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he looks awesome. Okay. Uh, so how, how do you win? Uh, so um, you win by playing minions on these various battlefields. Um, so uh, they you choose which battlefield they go on when you play them. Um, you When they attack, you will roll dice. Uh, the game comes with these nice custom dice. and. You get blanks or misses, stars or critical hits, skulls are individual hits, and these two skull results are two hits. Um, the attacker chooses where critical hits go. They could go on defending minions or they could go on the battlefield itself. And then the defending player has to assign all the rest of the damage to their side of the battlefield. You'll go back and forth making attacks into in a battlefield until that battlefield is done and then move on to the next one. So each round, in the beginning of the round, you're spending actions to play your guys out, draw cards, gain energy. And then in the battle phase, you'll be uh, attacking with your minions, dealing damage. If you can ever get a, a battlefield up to 12 points of damage on your opponent's side, you flip the board over to the ruined side of the city and put a control marker on whichever side of the player who won it is. If you can win two of the three battlefields, you win the game. Um, awesome, and then you also have this player board here. What's going yeah, on there? So the player board tracks everything in the game. So your energy that's used to cast your spells, the cost of a spell is up here, and uh, the energy to cast them is this track right here. Your actions is tracked on the, this red bead right here. During the action phase, you'll go back and forth. You spend an action and you choose one of these things to do. You can channel energy to increase your energy by two. You can meditate to draw two cards. You can, uh, you can cast a spell, um, paying its cost, playing one of those minions out of the table. You can activate a power. Some of your cards, like your character card, will say action colon do something cool. To do that cool thing, you spend an action action and indicate that, or you can spend an action to reinforce to move guys around. So you'll spend an action, your opponent will spend an action back and forth getting the battlefield set up. Then um, you move on to the battle phase, which is listed right here in the book, and you do those attacks back and forth with your minions. Um, this is where your omen counters go. Uh, beginning of each round, you'll get an omen counter. And whenever you play a card that has a little omen under its cost, 
you'll gain an omen counter. And these can be used to control your luck in the game. When you roll your dice, you can spend omens to re-roll any dice you don't like the results on. And you can do that as many times as you like, spending an omen each time. Your opponent can then spend omens to make you re-roll dice that they don't like. And you go back and forth until you pass. So you can control like your rolls a little bit. Yeah, I like that because then it's not all just about the chance. You could be really bad at rolling and you need it to be a good one. And, <laughs> and saving those for the areas where it matters most can make a really big difference. And then uh, this spot here on your board is where the fate counter goes. The player who takes the first uh, action of the, of the round gets the fate counter. And this will pass back and forth from round to round. Um, and this can be flipped over to force a reroll on an entire set of dice during the battle phase. So it's a very powerful reroll effect that you get once. And your deck that you make goes right there. And your discard pile goes right there. So each player has this really beautiful player board that has everything you need to track what's going on in the game. And the player boards are also double-sided. So on the back, uh, it has the uh, Egyptian motif. Um, and uh, the deck and discard pile go on the left on this side or on the right on this side. So if you have a preference where your deck goes, you can choose which side. The boards also have all the, the nice black uh, lining on all the boards. Uh, the cards are all linen finish. The got really nice custom dice. It's just a very high quality production. The box itself has like has a UV treatment on the artwork, so you can uh, you get some nice effects on it. The inside of the box has uh, a lining for used uh, so it can be used as a dice rolling tray, and uh, and the box itself. Um, we got a big full color rule book, spots for the extra uh, boards the game comes with. Your cards go here. There's a nice foam block that keeps them in place. You can it fits cards with or without sleeves. And there's um, little plastic bags that come in the game to hold all the tokens. And all the avatars go here, so it's really nicely laid out. Yeah, it looks like there's room for expansion. There is indeed. There is indeed. So we'll have down the road. We'll have more character, lineage, and domain decks uh, that will come out, and then it'll add to your selections at the beginning of the game. So, uh, for example, in August we have a new character, lineage, and domain coming out, and if you get each of those, instead of having 64 possible sorcerers, now you have 125, and as you continue to add to it, your uh, potential uh, decks that you can uh, uh, build just grow, uh, grow and grow. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Rob. Is there anything else you want to say about what's going on here at Origins and how, how the booth is happening? Over yeah, so uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We've got a 10K championship for both Star Realms and for Epic Card Game. We are doing a giveaway of Epic Card Game here at the show. So there's a coupon in the coupon book. Come on by the booth and get, you can get a free copy of Epic. Uh, and, of course, we've got demos of all our games. We've got a Legend Series tournament for Hero Realms. The winner of that will become a card in the game. So uh, lots of great events and uh, demoing all our games and, uh, and a cool free giveaway as well. Thank you. And if anyone wants to, if they're not at the cons, they want to know where they can go to find uh, and buy Sorcerer, where should they go? So um, your local game store or go to whitewizardgames.com and click on the links and you'll be able to find, uh, find out where you can pick it up. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rob. I look forward to playing Sorcerer and seeing more about it. Thanks. Thank nice you. to meet you. And as always, this is Unfiltered Gamer here at Origins. We look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, with Gary Chavez. Hi, Gary. How you doing? And he's sharing his game with us today, Saints and Scoundrels. Uh, so tell us, Gary, a little bit about the game, like who it's for and how many players and all that. Uh, Saints and Scoundrels is a pulp theme uh, bluffing card game. Two to six players, typical game time is about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, all of the players are unscrupulous private detectives looking for a serial killer in the city. Uh, and you're also sabotaging each other's investigations to make sure you're the only one who finds the serial killer. Uh, there's one person who's offered to help you, a man named Dr. Zyko a.k.a. Dr. Zyko the Psycho. He is a brilliant criminal psychologist. Unfortunately, he's also a serial killer, but he's in jail right now. So he can, you can consult with him, but the rumor is he's so bored in jail, he would love nothing more than to drive the private detectives insane. And causing chaos, right? Ab absolutely. <laughs> All right, so show us a little bit about the cards and maybe a little bit of how you play. So, uh, so this is the board. This is called the Evidence Track. Uh, you, everyone starts at the start, and you try to get to the end. When someone gets to the end, you got enough evidence to find the serial killer. But that person is not necessarily the winner of the game. 
Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So you move along the track by using the, one of these three moving cards. It moves two, three, and four, and these block uh, these cards, hit and box the informant, and so on. Uh, and the, the real twist part is that it's a bluffing game. So that everyone will get two cards, and you can say, I have an informant. Then everyone has to decide if you're lying or not. Or someone could put down a card, I will, I, if you have an informant, I have a hitman. Now the current player has to decide if, uh, if that other person's lying. Kind of like coup, but uh, a, little, a, little, a little changed up. Uh, then there's the psychotic doctor part. Some of these cards have a color band on here. If you match, if you have two blues, for example, that allows you to go see Dr. Zyko, if you want. And you can, if you want. If you want, you don't have to. But doctors, going to see Dr. Zyko will give you, let you allow, allow you to move seven spaces on, on the board, which is the most spaces you can move on here. There's about 25 spaces on here total. So it's a little bit of push your luck as well. Exactly. Well, you, well, every time you go see Dr. Zyko, you have to take one of these Dr. Zyko cars. And about half of them are blank. About half of them have one inside of the icon, and there's a couple in here that have two inside of the icon. So say, Callie, you went to see Dr. Zyko twice, and say that you say that you won the game, or got to the end, I should say. So let's, let's take a look at your Dr. Zyko cards. If you get three or more, you've gone insane. So there's one, there's two, so let's see. If you're at the end, and you went insane, you'd lose the game and you lose it to the person right behind you. So you, you stayed sane. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so you stayed sane, you won the game. What happens is sometimes Dr. Zyko will drive someone insane and they're out of the game. And the person who wins is the person who's farthest long without being driven insane. All right, and then you also have some other cards, the case file cards, right? Exactly. Uh, just to, to um, add some variation to the game, every time you land on the yellow spot, on the board, you get one of these case file cards. They generally help you. You can get, instead of picking two cards, uh, you get three cards and discard one. Allows you to find the combos. Sometimes you can, you can kind of provoke someone into seeing Dr. Zyko. A lot of other fun stuff that helps you along the way. You want to land on the yellow. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing Saints and Scoundrels. If people want to learn more, they want to sign up for maybe when the Kickstarter is coming out. Where should they do that, and when is that happening? Sure. Um, the Kickstarter is September 24th. Uh, they can go to my GC GCRS Games Facebook page, or go to my website at www.gc rocket science, that's all one word. I'm a rocket scientist, by the way, that's, that's where it comes from, dot com. Uh, all on GC rocket science, that's all one word. And there's a lot of information on there. Awesome, well, thank you so much for sharing, Gary. Uh, I hope you have a great con here today and really thank great to much, meet Kelly. you in person. Appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, so that's Unfiltered Gamer at Origins with Saints and Scoundrels. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.